The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, which was Transfiguration Sunday. Again, thinking of how Jesus as he was heading toward his suffering and death, how he was transfigured and took upon himself some of his glory as the true Son of God. And, well, Moses, who's referred to in our reading today, is one of the two prophets that appeared with Jesus on that Mount of Transfiguration. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 to 12. Moses writes, then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea. The Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt to Pharaoh and all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or perform the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. My dear friends in Christ, again we remember that this is the end of Moses' life after leading the Israelites for 40 years through the wilderness to the promised land, God gave Moses the opportunity to be able to see a glimpse of the promised land of Palestine. And what a breathtaking view that had to be for Moses, for him to look and think about how the Israelites had been in Egypt for all those years, how they were in the wilderness, and now finally they were getting to the promised land, the, the physical promised land of Palestine, a land where... Well, they could live in freedom with God's blessings. Moses did get a good glimpse, a good view of the promised land, but he wouldn't get to enter into that promised land because of oh, that one event that had happened earlier in his life when, when the Israelites were grumbling and complaining because they had no water and God told Moses that he should speak to the rock and it would produce water, but instead in anger at the people, because of their grumbling and complaining, Moses struck the rock with his staff and, and God said that Moses wouldn't get to enter into the physical land the physical promised land of Palestine because of his sin. God was disciplining Moses, teaching Moses a lesson and, well, teaching the people a lesson about the seriousness of sin. Well, God was giving Moses a good view of himself and his sin. But by the grace of God, Moses also had been given a good view of Christ. 
He knew God's grace and love. He knew the forgiveness of sins. And maybe he wasn't going to get to enter into the physical promised land, but he knew that by the grace of God, he was going to be soon entering into the eternal promised land of, of heaven. Our reading says, Since then no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Moses was such a great prophet, but again it was only because of the grace of God. If everything had been left up to Moses, remember that when the Lord called Moses to be his prophet, when the Lord appeared to Moses in that burning bush on Mount Sinai, before Moses went back to Egypt, well, Moses wasn't ready to be the leader for the children of Israel. He would have just backed away. But God was with him and God did bless him. And because God was with him and God blessed him, well, as it says here, there was no prophet like him in Israel and, and, until the Lord Jesus, of course. God even inspired Moses to write that that the people should look at him and see him as a type of Christ, as a prefigurement of Christ. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. On the Mount of Transfiguration, God the Father in a voice from heaven pointed to Jesus as the perfect fulfillment of what Moses had said there by saying, this is my son whom I have chosen, listen to him. So when we look at Moses, what God wants us to also do is get a good view of, of Christ. As Moses served as a mediator for the people, well, remember what he did as a mediator for the people. What he did is God gave Moses the laws and his word that Moses passed on to the people. And what Moses did so frequently in the course of his leadership of the children of Israel is that he so often pleaded with God the Father for, for his mercy for the Israelites who sinned, who grumbled and complained, and who rebelled against God. But now Jesus, he also is our mediator, but he's the perfect mediator because, well, think about it, what we get from Jesus, through Jesus, we get Jesus' own word, the word of God the word of God that works on our hearts, that shows us our sin and, and shows us our Savior and, and works faith in our hearts and, and gets us to eternal life in heaven. And what Jesus is doing for us too is he's always pleading for us before God the Father, reminding us, reminding God the Father always of how he paid for our sins and how he won for us eternal life in heaven. Well, both Moses and Jesus were great mediators for God, but between God and man, but, but Jesus, of course, is definitely superior. And that's clearly pointed out because, well, when you think about it, Jesus gives us his own word, right? Moses passed on to the Israelites, to us, the words of God. Jesus gives us his own word, which works on our hearts and our lives. And while Moses could plead for us on the basis of God's promise to be merciful to us, but Jesus can plead for us with God the Father because, well, what Jesus did is he paid for our sins. And because he paid for our sins on the basis of what he did, he can say, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them for all of their sins. And because of that, because of Jesus, well, think about it. Having him in our corner, having the one who lived and died for us, pleading for our case, we couldn't be in a better spot as we look forward 
to life after this life. As we live our lives in this sinful world, it's really important for us to have, well, God's view of things, which always reminds us of the seriousness of our sins and what we deserve because of our sins. But God's view of things also reminds us of God's amazing grace and love and the forgiveness of sins that we have through faith in Jesus. God's view of things also reminds us, reveals to us that when we have God's grace and mercy, when we have God's love, we really don't need anything else. With God's grace and mercy, with God's love, well, really what that means is that no matter what trials and troubles we may face in this life, and, and it sure seems like this world is throwing an awful lot of trials and troubles our way. Maybe it seems like more and more get heaped upon us absolutely every day. But even with those trials and troubles, when we have God's grace and love, well, then we have everything that we really need. We can, because of that grace and love, we can look forward to being, well, united with, with our God, with Moses, with Elijah, with all our fellow believers in heaven. We can have that, re, that, that confidence that we're going to be in heaven because and in that promised land, that eternal promised land of heaven, because what God has given to you and to me is he's given to us this good view of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, what of you you gave to Moses of the promised land? What of you you gave to Peter, James, and John of the Savior in some of his glory on the Mount of Transfiguration? And what of you you've given to us in the scriptures, first of ourselves and our sin, but then also a good view of Christ our Savior, of our Savior and of all that he's done for us so that we can see the eternal promised land of heaven as our home forever. As we live in a sin-troubled world, we keep coming to you, looking to your help to stop the aggressors and to help those who are being afflicted. But again, how blessed we are to see your grace and love and to know that heaven is our home. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.